Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. Um, I hope you all have your breakfast and your coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink in the morning um, as we enter into this space of worship and reflection together. I'm Pastor Nicole. I'm one of the pastors at Glencliff United Methodist Church, and we're just glad to be here with you this morning. It's an interactive space, so if you have birthdays to share or prayer concerns or comments or questions or anything you'd like to add, please put it in the chat and we love to hear from you. I have a few announcements to start us off with this morning. We will be in person next week starting at 11 a.m. It's May 1st and it's Isaac's last day at Glencliff. Isaac has been our field ed intern from Vanderbilt for this past year. And we're just so grateful for all of the time and the gifts that he shared with us and we'll miss his presence. And we wish Isaac the best of luck in his continued journey. On May 15th, we have an exciting day here at Glencliff. We are celebrating Pastor Joy's ordination. She has worked so hard for so long. Um, and we're just so excited to celebrate her. And it's also a community Sunday. So we'll be worshiping with friends from Belmont UMC and it'll just be a joy filled Sunday. So we hope to see you there. We have the Haven, our community garden here at Glencliff is having work days every other Saturday. So their next one is May 7th. They had one yesterday, so we'll come back again on May 7th. Um, keep an eye out on their social media pages for updates about those days if you'd like to be involved in the garden at all. And then at Glencliff, we're always working to seek justice and help support the needs of our community. So please consider us in your monthly gift giving to directly support these ministries. You can give online here on Facebook or at glencliffumc.org or by mailing a check to P.O. Box 158392, Nashville, Tennessee, 37215. We have a couple of birthdays that we celebrated this past week, um, both on April 22nd. Bobby Hargrove and Josephine Gross uh, were so grateful for their lives and the way that they share their gifts with us. Happy birthday and happy birthday to anyone out there who has a birthday coming up this week. We're excited to celebrate you. As we transition into a time of prayer, please feel free to share any prayer concerns or praises that you have in the chat. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. And then I'll list a couple that we know of that we've been lifting up in prayer. Um, and just know that we continue to pray for all in our community who aren't able to join us on Sundays or are joining us from afar. Um, let's enter into a space of prayer. We pray for Tanya and Gary, for Pat, for Carolyn and Sam, for Roy, Andy and Karen, Josephine, Nathaniel, Bowie, Glenda, Annette, Martha, Terry, the village at Glencliff, the Gatlin family, the future and family, and again, for those who can't join us this Sunday or for those who have requests and prayers that you hold deep within you. Let's pray. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory. Through the victory of Jesus Christ, we pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, violence, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ 
may appear in justice, love, and peace. In the glory of your name, amen. Have you ever heard something that seemed too good to be true? Have you ever questioned something that everyone around you believed wholeheartedly, but you still weren't fully convinced? What do you do in those times? Do you believe without question, just jump right in? Do you go along with it and kind of hold your questions inside if you have them? Do you find someone that you trust to talk to about it or to ask questions? I think we all probably do a number of these things and it depends on the situation and the context, how we respond. In our passage today, we'll read about Thomas's response to Jesus's resurrection. Let's read it together. It's John 20, 19 through 31 for anyone who wants to read along. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you heard in that passage and have probably been taught in the past, Thomas had questions. Thomas struggled to believe what the disciples were saying to him. When we talk about Thomas in our context, I think we forget that he didn't know the full story from the beginning. Now, during Holy Week, every year, we try our best to honor the process of grief and unknowns through Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil. But we already know how the story ends. The disciples lived this story in real time. Thomas knew that Jesus died and he wasn't there when Jesus appeared to the disciples. So Thomas questioned it when they told him of Jesus' resurrection. It sounded too good to be true. In this process of questioning, Jesus offered space to Thomas. Jesus didn't condemn Thomas for voicing his hesitation. Instead, he offered Thomas the same presence and proof that he did the other disciples when he arrived a week earlier at the beginning of our passage. And it seems important to recognize that Thomas trusted his community and Jesus enough to voice his questions openly and honestly. I think we give Thomas an especially hard time by giving him the title doubting 
And I wonder how rephrasing to curious or questioning Thomas might teach us something. So often we hear about doubting Thomas to teach us a lesson about believing. And it sounds to me like Thomas learned a great deal from Jesus through his questions. Questions aren't a bad thing. Questions can help us grow and discover new perspectives that we wouldn't otherwise encounter. And we and when we engage in questioning with a trusted and beloved community, we learn from one another. We learn from life experiences and beliefs that might not be our own. Questioning our faith doesn't mean that we're faithless. Questioning means that we seek to understand more deeply and engage for ourselves instead of taking things that we hear at, at face value. Jesus had compassion for Thomas, and Jesus has compassion for us as we explore and learn and question. In this Easter season, we can learn a great deal from Thomas, his questioning, his honesty, and his boldness. As we study Christ's resurrection, and as we seek to embody Christ's transformative and restorative presence in our lives and in our world. Amen. Please join us on Zoom for a discussion and we'll spend time together, maybe sing a couple songs. Uh, the link will be posted in the chat. Thanks so much for joining us this Sunday. Have a great day.